Senator Klobuchar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to both of you for being here. You win the prize is the best name for a nominee, Ms. Trustee. Um, so um, I just wanted to have one follow-up from Senator Fisher's questions, because um, I care a lot about universal service. Senator Thune and I have worked a lot on that together. Um, how do you think the FCC should modernize the USF to ensure its long-term sustainability? Thank you for the question, Senator. You know, I know that there are a number of proposals on the table, whether it comes from uh, identifying a, a specific predictable or sufficient uh, funding resource to ensure the Universal Service Fund can continue to meet connectivity needs across the country. There are proposals about a federal appropriation or looking to other uh, private sector entities to contribute to the contribution base. I think all of those things should be discussed uh, between the FCC and Congress to ensure we can continue meeting connectivity needs across the country. Thank you. As you know, I work with Senator Wicker on the uh, Data Act uh, to improve the accuracy of the FCC's broadband availability maps, uh, but we know more work needs to be done. Uh, if confirmed, how will you continue to work to ensure the accuracy of the maps? Thank you, Senator. So, uh, you know, I was on this committee when the Broadband Data Act was passed with the goal of making sure we knew where broadband is available, where it's not, to better target resources to unserved areas. You know, if, as a part of that law, there's an opportunity for a challenge process where folks can challenge the accuracy of the data, which I think can help improve the, uh, the accuracy of the maps. I also think the FCC should work with uh, private sector stakeholders who produce their own maps to inform, um, to inform the accuracy of the maps so that we can better target resources to areas who remain unserved, or who remain, yeah, who remain served. Okay, very good, thank you. And as you know, I care a lot about getting the broadband funding out. Uh, we've talked to a number of nominees about that. And then I'll ask you a question writing on 911. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Isaacman, uh, welcome. And um, uh, we had a good talk over the phone. Um, I mentioned STEM was really important to me. I was looking back uh, in 2017, um, um, President Trump signed into law. I remember because Senator Fisher called me from the White House. She was there and she said, what is this bill of yours? He's signing into law because <laughs> she happened to be there. And they did an event. Um, um, so it was a bill authorizing the NASA administrator to encourage women to study STEM. It's called the Inspire Women Act and pursue careers in aerospace. Could you talk about promoting the STEM workforce and in your role, if confirmed as NASA administrator, how you can... Um, inspire more uh, people to go into STEM in general. Just coming off the robotics competition in Minnesota on Saturday. Thank you. I was uh, under, there. Understood, Senator. Uh, first step is I'm uh, I'm still working on uh, getting my two daughters to want to grow up and uh, enter a spirit, uh, enter into the STEM fields. Um, I've tried with space flight, and I will get there. Um, I would love to. Um, I would love to answer that really in two parts. I think the first thing is first, it is, it is, fu it is a fundamental obligation uh, of NASA to inspire the next generation to want to be scientists, engineers, astronauts, pilots, doctors, researchers. Um, and I think the best way NASA can do that is by executing on its mission. I mean, that is what's going to have children want to dress up as, uh, as astronauts and scientists for, for Halloween is to get back to the moon, to get to Mars, and to inspire the world with whatever the replacement is someday for James Webb that gives us 100 times the resolution. The second part, ma'am, is uh, what I mentioned in my opening remarks about NASA being a force multiplier for science. Uh, once we inspire them in their, in their youth to want to grow up and, and join this, this grand endeavor, we, we want to get them hands-on in, uh, in their various academic institutions. I think NASA can lend its expertise, its talent, its bulk buying of rockets, its standard bus architecture, and get academic institutions to want to contribute, whether it's building probes or sensors, get them hands-on so when they graduate, they want to join the greatest space agency in the world. Very good. You know, I think uh, be, not just with space, but also with medical developments right now because of a combination of mapping of the human genome, I'm home of Mayo Clinic, Minnesota, as well as uh, the a uh, potential of AI to do good when it comes to things like rare diseases. We're just on this cusp of scientific uh, development kind of bursting out. And I do get concerned about some of these cuts to science-based research and agencies across the government, not just 
of space related. Will you be an advocate for <coughs> science within the administration? It, it, yes, ma'am. I, I do believe the president is looking to usher in a golden age of science and discovery. Personally, I just spent a few days ago with 50, 40 different science and researchers sharing the results from my most recent mission to space. I'm passionate about science. I'd love nothing more than to can you continue to see NASA go out and try and unlock the secrets of the universe. Thank you. Phenomenal plugs for Minnesota in that questioning. I always find a way. You'll learn that soon, Mr. Marino. <laughs> so, so Senator Moran, see if you can top that for Kansas. Well, that wasn't what I intended to talk about, but I'm happy to promote my state and have to uh, 